Welcome to Her Path to Success. My name is Tahara Saad, and this is brought to you by the Arab American Women's Business Council. Continuing on our series for women of influence, talking about women taking unconventional passions and turning them into something substantial. Uh, today, we have a guest that I think is extremely motivational and very, very inspirational for the journey that she's gone through and just the achievements that she's accomplished so far. And I think you'll hear a little bit more about her story and I'm sure you'll agree with me. Thank you, Rahaf. Thank you, Tahara, for having me. So introduce yourself, give us your name and just a little bit about what you do right now. So my name is Rahaf Khatib. Uh, I was born in Syria, Damascus, Syria, and raised here in Dearborn, Michigan. Um, moved to Farmington Hills after I got married, um, had three kids. And, you know, just being a stay-at-home mom, like, I felt like that wasn't fulfilling me enough. Um, I felt like I was alone. I felt like, okay, well, what's my purpose? You know, what am I doing here? Even though I have a degree and I, you know, graduated college, but I chose to stay at home to take care of my three kids, but then I wanted something else to fulfill me, um, to make me feel whole. You felt like something was missing. I felt like something was missing, and I needed something, you know, to do, to occupy my brain, you know, and not just, you know, watch cartoons all day with my kids. So, <laughs> just being a mom all day. Yeah, and, you know, I started going to the gym, but then that wasn't fulfilling enough either. And then one day, my son's gym teacher asked me to register for a race with her. And I said, yeah, that sounds so amazing. Even though I had no idea what distance, <laughs> I had no training plan. I had no clue as to how to get started, but I registered for the race and that was my step one of getting out there. And, um, and I must have trained for just a month, you know, uh -huh. and it was a 10K distance. I started with a 10K distance, wow. not a 5K because I was like, well, I want to put my money to good use. <laughs> and I don't want to pay for just running 30 minutes. I want to pay for running, you know, for an hour. Right. Go Maybe. big or go home. Go big or go home. <laughs> so I went that day and I ran. It was the Martian Marathon in Dearborn where, you know, where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And I crossed the finish line that day and I just felt euphoric. I felt, oh. you know what, this is it. This is my calling. I don't know why I thought that. You know, I, I, it's not like I had the fastest time. Mm -hmm. You know, or, I, or that I was an accomplished runner. I was far from that. I was very mediocre. Um, but, you know, something, something inside of me said, I'm coming back for more. Mm -hmm. This is not it. Wow. And I came back the year after that and did the half marathon. Wow. The year after that, I did the full marathon. Wow. So I just, you know, picked it up since um, that was 2012 was my first race and then 2014 was my first full marathon which is 26 miles um, and I did that in Detroit Detroit Free Press Marathon mm -hmm. and that's like a huge event um, that goes on in October and you know I crossed the finish line of that first full marathon in October of 2014 and I said I'm coming back for more Wow, you didn't and give up. And <laughs> I didn't give up. And then after that, I ran the Paris Marathon with my husband. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I think I ran Chicago. But um, what really changed things for me is when I registered to be in a contest for Runner's World. I don't know if you remember this. Um, I do, I do. And you followed me through my journey since day one. Yes, oh yeah. And I, I registered for a contest to be on a cover of a running magazine because mm -hmm. I said hey I love running now this is my calling this is my Might purpose well. why not and you know I felt like there was a lack of representation out there especially in the running mm -hmm. field in what sense it's 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 a predominantly white sport okay you know so you, you don't see many people of color or mm -hmm. you know it's an expensive sport too so you don't mm -hmm. see you know people like just throwing their money at, at running it's, it's just not you know, like I said, you don't, there's not much diversity in the sport. So right. I said, me registering for this contest, um, putting myself out there, I, I, I need to diversify the field a little bit, you know, right. and um, how come we don't see Muslim women, covered Muslim women in magazines, in sporting magazines? This is mm -hmm. way before Ibtihaj Muhammad. Right. You know, right. way before, you know, all of that. Um, yeah. So... I did that in 2015, it was May 2015, mm -hmm. 
And people kept voting for me because in order to be on the cover of, the ma of that magazine, Runner's World, you have to be voted. It's a competition. It was a competition, right. exactly. And right. so I was, I was top 10. Um, That's amazing. They flew us all in New York. We were on the Today Show. We met Natalie Morales. We met so many other significant people in the running mm -hmm. field. And it was an amazing time. And, and then and that, that time came for the judges because we had five judges at the time to vote. Unfortunately, I didn't make it on that cover. It's still an amazing accomplishment, yeah. though. You went so far to be yeah. a visibly Muslim woman, an right. Arab American woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To make it up to that level is it's amazing. Yeah. And I think you did a really good job Thank of, you so much. of showing that diversity in running. That Thank you. Not not to no two people look the same. Right, and it's it's crazy the comments I get, especially at that time, about oh, like, are you allowed to run? Or, Right. Or you, like, what do Muslims the hate, the hate think? Comments. And, yeah, the hate comments and the trolls and everything. But my journey didn't end there. Mm -mm, so, not even close. No. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know. <laughs> I had no idea what was coming. Um, oh, yeah. I was really disappointed I didn't get the cover. Right. But um, alhamdulillah, I was still in that magazine because the contestants right. were featured. They did a right. story on each contestant. There were 10 top 10 contestants. So you didn't give up? I didn't give up. I didn't give up. I prayed and prayed and I said, God, if this is meant to happen, let it happen. I don't know how or when, just please. I worked so hard and, mm -hmm. and, and then that's just it. You know, I just put it in my mind that I'm going to be on the cover of the magazine, of a running magazine. And what happened? After that, Woman's Running Magazine contacted me and said, we want to feature you in our magazine in our October issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this was 2016. And I said, Okay, that's great, you know, thank you. They emailed me the next day and they said, actually, we want you on the cover. Wow. Just like that. That's amazing. Just like that. Like, for them to just email me the next day and just say, yeah. actually, we actually want you on the cover, not only to as feature a feature. You. So wow. they booked it right away. Photography, everything, wardrobe, everything mm -hmm. was booked in that July, in that July of 2016. Mm -hmm. And we, we shot it in downtown Detroit mm -hmm. on the river. And I, the photo that they chose, I was leaning against a glass building. And they said that they loved that the most. So mm -hmm. they chose that as the cover. And once this cover came out in September uh, of 2016, because, mm -hmm. you know, magazines come out a month Takes a while. earlier. So once that came out, let's see, September 26th of 2016, it just went viral. Mm -hmm. It went viral. It went, I had journalists in India contact me. Wow. In Pakistan, in the Middle East, in Egypt, everywhere. Everywhere. It wow. went viral. Yahoo, CNN.com. Because you were the first hijabi right. on the cover of a sports magazine. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I guess, and, and. It was about time that happened. Right. It was about time that happened. Because you're not the first hijabi athlete. Exactly. And, so. you know, we're here. We exist. Right. We exist in all different fields. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it was, it was about time this happened. So I think that I like that because that's why I say you're so inspirational. Because you took something that could have been a negative, mm -hmm. right? You got started, you went for this competition, you didn't win. Yeah. You could have very easily said, okay, well, that was my shot. I, yeah. I'm not going to do anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And you could have decided to take all that hate comments and mm -hmm. all those negativity and not want to be in the spotlight anymore. Yeah. But you continued to do that and you put yourself out there, not for yourself, for your own yeah. personal gain. No, not at all. But to be an inspiration. For and, my kids, right. for my community, for people who have always felt different right. growing up you know exactly and and you know just scrolling along on instagram i saw at that time there was no covered muslim woman runner right right and so i created this instagram account and now it has you know run like a hijabi run like a hijabi and now it's like up to 20k followers and like i have a platform now and i feel right. so grateful and i've had so many opportunities come to me like just fell on my lap like I right. felt I feel so blessed for those opportunities right you did a campaign with Reebok I did a campaign with Reebok with New Balance um, right. Garmin which is which are the watches for um, athletes and it's, athletes it's so amazing to see because for me I think one of the biggest accomplishments is 
you've completed all of the world major marathons. Yes, that's another now crazy thing that <laughs> happened in my life. <laughs> now for me, it's even crazier because you and I went to middle school and high school together. Yeah. And we took gym together. Yes, we did. And we failed all of our running together. It was not good. <laughs> We would drag each other across the line and still fail and have to retake it. Yeah. That was, so. I would cry on some days. Yes. I would cry. <laughs> and I know you were so like, you needed those good grades because you were like, it's I the have only to thing. get yeah. good GPA. Yeah. I didn't care about GPA. I, just, <laughs> I didn't want to run in gym <laughs> class. Like, I think because I was pressured and that created anxiety. Right. Yeah. And so that just made me have a negative um thinking about running right but now that I'm doing it on my own on my own terms mm -hmm. on my own pace I, f I love it right because you I choose it. it and it gave me an outlet yeah you know and it so gave me more. my me time and it gave me a sense of accomplishment right so um, yeah and ever since then alhamdulillah I've, I've run the six world majors in less than two years I've raised over twenty two thousand dollars for charity amazing so alhamdulillah like that's my way of giving back because they say marathoning can be a very selfish sport mm -hmm. because it's all about training it's all about me 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 you right. know but this way i felt like i can give back that's amazing so at the same time i'm hitting you know what they say two birds with one stone so right alhamdulillah and i hope to do more so i hope so too and and i have no doubt of the fact and thank you. i'm so proud of everything you've accomplished you're thank you. an inspiration not only to hijabi women that you know feel misrepresented or underrepresented in the media or sports or any field really but you're an inspiration to any woman who thank you. feels unfulfilled and doesn't know what to do to feel accomplished or to be whole because yeah. it's a it's a it's a big feeling, and mm -hmm. it has a lot to do with depression and anxiety mm -hmm. and, and so many other oh, for sure. effects, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Postpartum depression. All of that. And, you know, now with my dad being sick with cancer, right? it's it's also a form of outlet. Running is a mm -hmm. form of outlet for me. Right. So. And you took, you found your passion accidentally. Accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> and then you took that passion and ran with it. Literally yeah, no and pun figuratively. Intended. Yeah. <laughs> you took sure. that passion and created something so inspirational out of it. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank and you. I, I can't wait to see what comes next. I can't wait either. <laughs> I don't know because I don't plan these yeah. things. They just kind of come at me. So yeah. Thank so you. if you want to follow along Rahaf's journey journey as well, follow her on Instagram, run like hijabi. Thank you, Rahaf. Thank you.